if you remember at the end of the last session, we talked about, uh, we actually worked uh, an example and showed an example um, problem. Uh, using the 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 astral pavement design method, and then let's see if we can find it here. Okay. So here are the notes from um, last session. And you, if you remember, we worked on using this graph to find the value for SN. And then we had this problem uh, that uh, this was our um, traffic combination. Uh, we are looking to design a flexible pavement for expected life of 10 years. Standard deviation is 0.4. The initial pavement serviceability index is 4.2 and the terminal serviceability index is 2.5. Uh, the resilient modulus of the subgrade layer is 15,000 PSI or 15 KSI. And then the average annual daily traffic ADT of different types of vehicles that we have in the traffic are uh, for cars and pickups and vans, we have 30,000 per day for single unit trucks, we have 1000 per day. And then for semi trailer trucks, we have 350. And then uh, it is important to, to take a look at these uh, axle uh, loads and, in, and also axle combinations uh, because we are gonna use these ones in uh, finding the equivalency factors in uh, from the tables that we just provided. Okay, now go back to the to the tables. If you have downloaded the table, let's see, it's over here. Okay, so if you have downloaded the table, uh, you will see these ones. Uh, in your PDF. So what you see is uh, we have one table for single axle load, right? And then we have another table for that says tandem axle right here at the top. Um, so this was tandem, this was single axle for the TSI of 2.5. And then down here, we have another table for uh, triple axle and then over here we have the reliability level the z scores this is the z score uh, for the reliability levels and the last one is the structural layer coefficients that's the last step in the design process okay so going back to this one so what you see in this table is your um, axle load in kips that's the actual axle load that you have in the traffic and then uh, you will have the sn number but this is the the challenge that i mentioned last time that you are actually looking for sn number um, so it is unknown but in order to calculate the traffic at this step you need to know uh, the sn because each sn for these Axle loads are, are going to give you a different equivalency factor. So what we do is we usually assume an initial value, which is most of the time four, and then we work out through the problem. And if at the end, the DSN that you calculate is not the same as the one that you assumed, you need to uh, change your assumption, go back to these tables, uh, recalculate the equivalency factors and then uh, do the SN calculations again to uh, until uh, the initial assumption for SN and the final calculation will be the same. 
Okay, so let's start on this problem. For this problem, we have for the cars uh, and, and pickups and light vans, we have single axle. Uh, these are the, the vehicles with single axles, and each axle has 2,000 pounds or two kips. So what will you need to know or what you need to find is this is uh, actually two kips. So we have um, the axle load of two kips. And then since we assumed SN, uh, the initial assumption for the SN was four, our equivalency factor for this vehicle is going to be 0 0.0002. Okay, now how do we use this equivalency factor? All right, so let me go back, maybe top here. Okay, so we have, let's say we have a, a regular vehicle and then for each one, for each, we have two single axle, for each axle, uh, we have two kips, right? And then the equivalency factor, we actually call it EALF, which is equivalent axle load factor. So EALF for a single axle right over here, down here, for a two kip single axle um, with the SN of four is the equivalency factor is 0 0.002. And since we have two of these, we have another 0 0.002. Okay. So what does this mean? It means that for one uh, passenger car or regular passenger car with this configuration, it is equivalent to the passing of two Okay, so we have two axle, so we have 0, 0, 0, 002 plus 0, 0, 0, 0002. It's going to be 0 0.004. And what does this mean? This means that one passing of this car is equivalent to 0 0.0004 ESO or 18 kips ESO. Remember the ESO that we talked about on the single axle load, and we said that we need to convert everything to 18 kips to be able to calculate the overall traffic load. Uh, this is that process. So again, one passing of one or the damage that one car, one regular car that imparts on pavement is equal to 0 0.0004. Uh, 18 kips single axle load, right? Okay, so we need to go back to the traffic. How many of these uh, vehicles we had in the traffic? So this is for, for one car. So we had 30,000 of these vehicles in the traffic it's going to be 30,000 times point zero zero four right and feel free to stop me if you have any other any 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 questions or you want me to slow down and go back and We do any of the any parts of the problem. Okay, so we have the total is going to be twelve. Again, twelve ESO or equivalent single axle load, or eighteen kips. Right. So again, passing of thirty thousand passenger cars on the on the traffic or on the pavement section is equal to or is 
as if you have only 12 uh, single axle load that each one has an 18 kips uh, pressure on the pavement, right? So that's how we convert everything to uh, 18 kips ESO. So this is the first number that we need. This is uh, 12, that's for passenger cars. The second type in the traffic was single unit trucks. So for the trucks, we had two types, we had, we had another two uh, axle and both of them were single. So for the truck, if I want to show the trucks here, this is single unit truck. You have one axle here, one here. The one in the front or the steering wheel was eight kips or 8,000 pounds. The one, the rear one was 22 kips. Again, these are from the example that we had last session. And since both of these are single axle, again, we are using table for one here, but this time we're looking at eight kips, right? And over here, 22 kips, right? So again, with the same assumption of SN, the initial assumption was four, for eight kips, we had 0 0.041, and then for the 22 kips, we have 2.09, right? So the, the equivalency factor for this one is 0.041, Zero for one, that's the equivalent single axle load factor. And EALF for this one is 2.09, right? So what we can do is, so it means that one passing of one uh, single unit truck is equivalent to 0 0.041 plus 2.09 of an ESO or 18 kips ESO, right? All right, so we have 2.09 plus 0 0.041, that's 2.131, right? And how many we had in the traffic? we had 1,000 of these vehicles in the traffic. So 1,000, that's AADT. The same here is AADT. Um, and then that would be 2131. Again, E-cells, right? or 18 kips ESO, or 18 kip equivalent single axle. This is the second number that we need. So it means that passing of thousand of these trucks is equivalent to passing of 2131 18 kips single axle units that each unit has, that each axle has 18 kips um, load. All right, and the last, type of vehicle was a tractor semi uh, trailer truck. I'm gonna move over here. For this, this one, we had three types of axles. Uh, so we had one. The one in the front was 10,000 or 10 kips. We had a tandem axle um, over here, uh, and each one, or uh, the, the tandem axle uh, was 16 kips. And then we had a triple axle in the back or in the rear, we had, which was 44 kips, right? So how do we do this? Um, Going back to the table, uh, for the tandem, for the for the single axle, we have ten kips. 
So we need to use this table from the single axle and looking at 10 kips over here, you have 0.102. So the EALF, the equivalency factor is 0.102. For the tandem axle, again, we are looking at SN4. Uh, this time the load is 16 kips. So we're looking at 16 kips over here. And then we have point five se 0.057, right? And then for the last one, we have a triple axle. So we need to move on to the third table for the triple axle table for three, again, looking at SN equal to four, um, we had 44 kips here. So looking at 44 kips here at SN equal to four, it's gonna be 0 0.769, right? It's gonna be 0 0.769, right? So the total EALF, the equivalency load factor is gonna be, that's for one vehicle, right? Plus 0 0.057 plus, and that's gonna be, Point nine two eight. Point nine two eight, right? And how many of these we had in the in the traffic? We had three hundred and fifty of these, right? Let me see. We had huh? yes, three hundred and fifty semi trailers. So three hundred and fifty times. 0 0.928 point one two plus point zero five seven plus point seven six nine. 928 and then that is this one times 350 that's 325 that's e cell or equivalent 18 kip single axle right now that we have everything in the units of equivalent single axle, now everything is in uh, 18 kip equivalent single axle, uh, and we can and now add them up to find the traffic for one day because that was the total number of the, the, the all the numbers. This was again AADT, the average daily traffic, right? So the ESO, the total ESO for one day, for one day is gonna be, okay, so that's the third number that we need. Looking back at the numbers that we found, we had 12 ESO for the, uh, for the single uh, unit for the uh, passenger cars plus 21 31 easels for the single unit trucks and plus 325 for the semi trailers and that is going to be Twelve plus twenty one thirty one plus three twenty five. That's twenty four sixty eight. 
2468 ESOs, right? So that's uh, the number of equivalent single axle load for one day, right? So do we have the traffic ready for the pavement calculations? Not yet. Why? Because this is only for one day and we are, and, uh, we are actually designing the pavement for 10 years, right? So what we do is, so ESO for 10 years is for one, ESO for one day times, for a year is gonna be times 365 and for 10 years, it's gonna be times 10, right? <clears throat> so we have uh, one day times 365 times 10, that's 9 million. And the correct, the actual number is nine. Let me, so it's 9008, 200. So that's the total. We have, so what does this mean? This means that if you have that combination of traffic in your, uh, or in your, uh, on your roadway on, or on your pavement system, that the damage that they impart to the pavement system is equal or equivalent to the damage that 9 million single axle, 18 cube single axle units will impart to the pavement. Right, so this one we call it W18. That's the, the same W18 that we had in the equation. Right now, from now on, it's uh, relatively easy. Uh, so this is the uh, the W18 part of the equation. And if you remember the left side of the equation was log 10 of W18. So now we have the left side of the equation. Now on the right side, uh, we have uh, pretty much everything else except for SN and that's what we are looking for. So let's calculate the rest of them. The, the other parameter that we can calculate was Delta PSI. I was the initial PSI 4.2 minus uh, terminal PSI or TSI of 2.5. That's gonna be 1.7. That's our Delta PSI. And then we said that R was the reliability level was 95%. But what we need for the equation is Z or the Z value. How do we calculate Z value? Going to table four, four here. Um, so R is 95%, right? So R is over, how do we find 95%? We have 90 over here and five over here. So uh, the ZR relevant to the 95% is negative 1.645, right? So the ZR for the 95% is negative 1.645. Okay, so if you look back at the equation, we have everything in that equation and we can solve it for SN now. Solve the equation for SN. Therefore, SN from that equation is 3.94. Now, the initial assumption assumption was SN, we assumed that SN, we started uh, 
if you recall from this step, we assume that from the tables, uh, the, the initial SN will be four. And if the final SN was very different than the initial assumption, we would go back and redo the process, right? But right now is pretty close. So we can, uh, we can accept that the first assumption was close enough and we can, we don't need to go back. Now, what happens is that, for example, if you have, let's say 5.5 here, after solving the equation, you need to change your initial assumption to five on all the tables and redo all these traffic calculations with the new, uh, with the new um, equivalency factors, all of these, they need to be done again. And then going back, calculating the new ESO uh, right here, the new one with five, and then again, calculating the SN. And if that one is close to five, then we are good to go. Otherwise we have to go back again, right? All right. Now the question is, what do we do with this? And let's, uh, okay, so now we are good now in terms of initial assumption. What do we do with SN now? Uh, once you have the SN, you need to find, that's actually not the final answer for your pavement design, but we rather need the, the layer thicknesses for different layer properties, right? So we need to, the next or the last step in the design process is, remember this equation from last session that A1, D1 plus A2, D2, M2 plus A3, D3, M3, right? Now, uh, from the equation, from the problem, we know that the drainage equations, the drainage coefficients for the base and sub-base layers are one. And then we need to find A1, A2, and A3. These are the layer coefficients. For the layer coefficients, you have another small table here. It says the structural layer coefficient table four, five over here. Uh, and then for each type of layer, you see that we have the varying surface layer, the base layer, and the sub-base layer. Um, so for each layer um, in this problem, uh, for the base, we had the soil cement. So A2 was 0.2, right? From the table for the, for the varying surface, or for the top surface, we had HMA, hot mix asphalt. So we have 0.45, that's A1. And then for the sub-base, we have only one option here, the crushed stone, uh, which was 0.11, right? Now we have um, everything. Uh, oh, and then it was also given that D1, the thickness of the first, the top layer, the HMA layer, was four inches. Um, D2, that's the unknown we are looking for, the thickness of the base layer. We wanna know how much or what thickness of base layer we need for this type of pavement. And then we knew that the thickness of the sub-base layer was 10 inches, right? Now, if we just replace everything. We have 3.94 here, SN. A1 is 0.44 times four plus A2, 0.2 times D2, we don't know, times M2 is one plus A3, that's uh, 0.11 times D3 is 10 inch and A3, 
uh, and M3 is one. That's a drainage coefficient for the subbase, right? And from this equation, you can calculate D2 finally as 5.5 inches. So that's the final answer we were looking for to, uh, to answer what thickness of base layer we, uh, we need. And it's actually the, if you solve it for this problem, it's gonna be 5.4, but uh, for the practical, for practical purposes, uh, you need to round it to the nearest uh, 0.5 inch. So the thickness of base layer, the thickness of base uh, layer is gonna be 5.5 inches, right? That's, uh, that was a, an example <clears throat> from beginning to the end using the Ashto Paven design method, right? All right. Okay, so one, one thing that for this step right here, for the calculation of this and um, the, the, the most accurate uh, step or the most accurate method is to use the equation But you can also use the graph that we were showing last uh, session. But again, the graph is just an approximation and you cannot find a, an exact value using, uh, using the graph. All right, so that was a, a, a quick uh, um, example of doing this. Uh, there are some, um, there are several uh, uh, software packages. There, it was actually a, a, a software package that would solve this uh, problem automatically. Uh, it was provided by Astro a long time ago and they stopped supporting the software because they, they replaced it with the Astro Pave ME, the mechanistic version that we will have for the final project. Um, but still there are some Excel spreadsheets um, that does this calculation automatically. Okay, so one thing we can do is, uh, this was a straightforward method just to follow the SN process, right? Or the SN value, right? Um, there's another way, uh, of doing this is that uh, designing based on or reliability assessment of the design. For example, the problem will give you the, um, the design parameters and also the, the pavement layer specifications. And it wants you to find out what is the reliability level or what is the R value for uh, or at, at, for example, at 90% at 90% confidence level, uh, what would be your uh, uh, pavement life, or how many years this pavement would last at 95% at 90% 95% or 99% right so it's going to be the same process with a little bit of twist in 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 uh, 